Good morning, everybody. Um, it's just coming up to 12 o'clock, so um, I'm starting our weekly uh, Q&A. Um, obviously, today is the first day of the new routine that was announced by the Prime Minister on Sunday evening. Um, the guidance that went with the announcements on Sunday came through at about five o'clock um, on Monday evening and we have spent the last 36 hours or so interpreting what they mean. Um, about half an hour ago I did post uh, a statement onto our website which was very similar to the um, update that I gave to our members of parliament and our councillors last night which I do several times a week uh, which hopefully helps to explain some of the changes that we've made this week, how they are affecting the council, why they've been done, why they might be different from our neighbours and, um, and and a number of real updates for you. So please do have a look at that. It's also on our website um, and hopefully it will give you a really good idea of, of our, um, our, think, our thinking. So the first question I've got is can I suggest what people who are home working and don't have off-road parking permits do now we've reintroduced enforcement? Um, Unfortunately, um, we, we've had to make the decision to, to bring back enforcement. And what I would say is that um, if you are a, a key worker, you can um, get a permit to park in our car parks. So if you're a key worker working from home, then you can park for free in car parks. Um, that may be an option for you. Um, you go onto our website and uh, you, you can organize that. Um, as far as people who are working from home uh, and there are uh, residence permits available, then that is another option that you could look at. Um, if the roads have um, single yellow lines, then they, they have single yellow lines sort of for a reason. So it, it is difficult. Um, where you've been furloughed, um, I suppose it's the same situation as if you're no longer working. Um, and if you were no longer working, then you wouldn't be able to um, to park outside your home. So um, it is going to have to be a case that you, you're going to have to find somewhere to park that doesn't have restrictions. Um, we will look at how this is affecting people over a period of time. So we are aware that it is an issue. Um, and if there's any changes to happen, then we will we will deal with that. Um, Beach hut fee be extended. I, I say we, we haven't been talking about beach hut fees, and, and we've reopened the beach huts today. So the time you've been um, you've not been able to access your beach hut has been the same time period for which you've not been able to leave your house to go anywhere else and sit. So whilst I understand people's frustrations, um, even if we had allowed you to continue to access your beach hut, okay, um, you couldn't have sat inside or outside your beach hut without breaking the law because the only reason you were allowed to leave home was for exercise, work, um, medical reasons, shopping, um, or to help somebody in the community. So I, I'm, I'm still really struggling with, you know, I recognize you've had something that you purchased for a year, which you've had six weeks you've not been able to access. There are un, other areas whereby, um, people have purchased things for a year and they've had six weeks, they've not been able to use it. That That's the reality I, I'm at the moment that we're not looking at, at those refunds. We're adhering to government advice to work from home and we've reintroduced parking restrictions. I've just covered that, so we will try and get some more clarity on that. Um, local businesses in shared spaces. Um, okay, so the, the, uh, the business grants. Um, we're really frustrated by this and I've put this in my announcement, uh, my, my statement. Um, Christopher Choke, one of our MPs, has asked a question in the House, um, the House of Parliament, that, that, that it's known as the House, um, around this because we were told on the 1st of May that this new grant was coming out and that we would have discretion about how it was going to be spent. It was followed with guidance to say, you can do this, you can't do this, we want you to spend it on this, and by the way, we haven't yet told you how much you can have. It's now the 13th of May we still don't have that information so i'm incredibly sorry our team are really frustrated we've now processed all of the grants that were outstanding other than those that have queries um, from businesses who qualify for the original grants and our team is ready to help but we can't finalize our scheme until the government actually give us the rules so i'm really sorry we are doing our best make sure you're signed up for our newsletter if you go on the website go to the new sign up you can pick what you want to be updated on 
pick uh, business and we'll make sure that you know as soon as we know. We genuinely don't know yet. Um, I'm working really hard with uh, partners um, in the council to, to make sure that as many businesses as possible can benefit from that fund. Uh, many thanks for support. tennis courts. Yes, you can play tennis, you can play golf, um, you can go to the skate park. So those are the ones that we know are opened, uh, but obviously social distancing measures um, and you can't play with members of other households other than one person at two metres. That, that's how I understand it. Um, Danny, I'm so sorry that you're supposed to be getting married today. What a beautiful day it would have been. Um, wedding, so we, there's a meeting happening tomorrow, that's Thursday, with the registrars about the rules for weddings. Um, there, are, there are the ceremonial weddings, i.e. the small you know, groups of you know, um, bridegroom, two witnesses, um, and whether or not they can proceed, um, we're waiting on that. We're also waiting on how do we deal with the uh, event that goes around weddings. At the moment, they're postponed. We don't know what the government's going to say about larger events. Again, we were given the impression there would be guidance around weddings. That hasn't come. So please just hold fire. Um, if you can contact our, our registrar's team, um, they're going to be contacting everybody anyway, but if you do have a particular concern, I know a couple of people have contacted me where their weddings are now 63, 64 days away and they're being asked for payment for things and therefore they, they have a need to know imminently. Um, I'm asking if people can contact us directly and say, look, I'm on a deadline, can you give us an idea? But tomorrow morning there is a meeting. I realistically, maybe by Monday or Tuesday, will understand what the implications of that are. But um, I, I'm, I'm sorry, we can't help with that. Um, so the, the car park. So let, let's have a conversation about the car parks. As I put in my statement, the government made quite a bizarre announcement on Sunday. We've gone from you can't leave your house other than for four reasons to you can go anywhere in England for anything you like as long as you're only with your own members of your household. That is a massive move we can do nothing to stop people coming from elsewhere. The reason that we are, um, the reason that our car parks are open, as opposed to Dorset, is we're a very urban community. Dorset are a predominantly rural and small town community. Most of our, we are compressed into a 15 mile stretch of, of coastline. And we have a situation where we have 400,000 people who all live within about 10 miles of the sea but most of them live more than two miles from the sea and they would like to be able to go to their own beach and their own parks. Currently, they can't do that because unless they can walk there, they can't use that car park. The car parks have reopened for us so that we can use them. However, we can't stop other people coming from elsewhere because that's actually not legal. The police are not allowed to stop people coming into Dorset, coming into Bournemouth. That's not simply not available to them. We're frustrated, you're frustrated. I would have liked to see the government say, you can only travel within 30 miles of your home. And that way the police would be in a position to, um, to say, actually, where's your ID? Where do you come from? Go home, we can't. Dorset have made a different decision. That's down to them. And I respect their right to do that. But they're going to have different congestion issues. We have checked in the last 10 minutes, I've had confirmation the car parks are not packed. Um, there is plenty of space. People are being sensible. So, you know, please, you don't need to go out just because the car park is open. If you need to go out, you can, and you can use the car parks. Uh, but please be aware the car parks are open, but you will have to pay. We would like you to pay um, without cash if you possibly can. Uh, our car parks are all operated via phone or apps, so you can do that quite safely. I'm shielding. Can my 13-year-old go for a bike ride alone? Sarah, my children have been going for bike rides alone since they were about eight. Um, you know, if you're comfortable with your child going out on their own at 13, um, I would be, but I don't know your child and whether they're proficient on a bike. We do have lots of... Um, lots of um, facilities for bike riding. It's, it's much safer out there than it has been. And we are spending money right now um, on improving the facilities for cyclists and pedestrians across the country, across the, um, the BCP. Um, there are already plans that we've announced and the government announced additional money at the weekend. And we're, going, we're working up as quickly as we can ways to put in 
uh, measures to make our roads safer for cyclists, block up some of the rat runs, um, and we're asking you, the members of, of our community, to tell us what you'd like. If you go to the um, to my statement, there's a link so you can contact us um, and tell us which roads you'd like to see uh, have rat runs stopped or have cycling um, support put in place. Um, okay, um, just trying to go back. Have we considered the risk of people from out of town coming to Bournemouth? We can't. We, we, we absolutely can't. I really like them to not come. The police cannot stop them legally. Some MPs have written to Parliament and said, put this restriction on distance. Our MPs have agreed that on Monday, if there is a concern, um, but they will actually contact the, their colleagues in Parliament too. Um, so we have that commitment from them if it becomes a problem. When are the libraries opening? Uh, at the moment, we've got no plans to reopen libraries. There are no inside facilities that are being open to the public. Um, so I'm afraid we're going to hold on. However, our libraries have done some great stuff with making facilities available online. Um, e-books, things like that. Um, if you have access to that, the libraries are making lots of them available for free. Um, car parking. I can see lines waiting in the machine. Da, 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 da. Well, right now there's no queues. Um, the machines don't need to process payment because most people can now use their phone or use uh, either their phone. If they don't have a smartphone, you can phone up and you can pay by phone. If you do have a smartphone, you download the app. You don't need to go anywhere near the car parking machine if you don't want to. We are actively encouraging you not to use cash. And going forward, um, it's likely that cash machines will not be available in car parks because of the cost um, the cost of collecting the cash, the vandalism, um, and, and the risk of theft. How can public toilets be safe to use one in, one out? We're absolutely not going to be able to clean the toilets after in each individual use. I don't think that's realistic. If you have concerns, I suggest that you don't use the public toilet. Um, if you go to the supermarket and use the toilet in, in your supermarket of choice, they don't clean it after every use. Um, you need to be responsible yourself by carrying wipes or sanitizer if that's what you wish to do. Um, if you wish to wipe the seat before you use it, then take a wipe. Um, we will make sure that the toilets are cleaned uh, very regularly. Uh, we will then close the toilets during that period of cleaning rather than normally we would clean and keep them open. That's for the protection of our staff and so social distancing can be maintained. But you've been asking us to open the toilets for weeks. We've now opened the toilet so that you're outside longer and you have access. It really is your decision whether you wish to use that public toilet. Um, you know, it, it, it's a two way thing. So we will keep them as clean as we can. We will ask people not to vandalize them, not to steal the consumables, which is what has been happening. Um, and to socially distance yourself. Um, and if you can see somebody coming out, don't go in until they've left. So, you know, that, that really is thrown up. I, I, can't, I can't be any clearer. Some of you don't agree with us opening up to day tourists. It is an our decision. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna keep going with that. We cannot stop day visitors. The day visitors will come. If I lived in Coventry and I decided to go out for the day and drive to Bournemouth, which I can do within two or three hours, I wouldn't be thinking, I wonder if the car parks are open. I'd probably drive here and then go, oh, the car parks are closed. All right, well, where do I park? I'll park on the road. Those people will come if those people are going to come. We are making sure that when they arrive, we can manage them safely and the people who live here are not going to have to deal with double parking outside their house double yellow lines, unsafe parking. Um, okay, somebody's asked about how you can nominate a staff member for great service. I don't know, but I'll find out. I know that we do have that sort of thing, and I think it's a great idea that we recognize some of our staff who've done some extraordinary things. Deborah's asking about primary school children social distancing. You tell me, uh, my children are now teenagers. Um, they have enough trouble social distancing. I don't know how a five-year-old is supposed to do that, um, but that really isn't a question for the council. However, our teams are working with our partners in education to help that restart of schools. I'm actually slightly more concerned about how we're going to make sure that the parents of those children can go back to work when, until June, only key worker children are allowed to go to school 
and there are lots of people being asked to go back to work who aren't key workers who have children so that for me is a bigger issue and I think we need to get our heads around that and again it's part of this the messaging's not quite there will parents be fined if we choose not to send our children back no I've, I've read that I've read that there is um, you will not be penalized for that um, okay uh, such a shame BCP has enabled golf um, okay the golf course is a part of Queen's Park. It is not the whole of Queen's Park. Lots of Queen's Park is available for you to enjoy and explore as you always have done. The golf course has reopened because the government has said the golf courses from today are now open, along with tennis courts, basketball courts and skate parks. So we have reopened those in line with the government advice um, and partly because those people are, you know, have every right to go and play golf as long as they're only playing with one member of another household or people from their own household and they're more than two metres apart. Um, but you have the rest of Queen's Park to use and Merrick Park and the beach and all of the other open spaces. Um, okay, Dorset Home Choice, thank you. So, several people have raised this. At this point, we have not reopened Dorset Home Choice for bidding where people have an emergency uh, or critical need for a move, perhaps through domestic violence or their house isn't suitable due to a, a recent um, illness um, or, or, or something critical like that, then we are keeping those voids available for those people. It will reopen in due course. If you're registered, you'll be notified um, so that you're ready to, um, to, to take advantage of that. I have been contacted by a number of families who have some really difficult situations and I've asked officers to look at how we can help those people. Okay, um, so I'm moving on there. Um, so the issue about uh, car parking again, lots of our residents live in flats. That's another difference with Dorset. Lots of people live in flats. People live five or six miles from the beach. They need to be able to get there now that things are open. Some good news though. Let's do some good news. Garden centres have opened. Okay, so those of you that have been desperately looking for a morale boost, you can go to the garden centre instead of going to the beach. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm trying to look on the bright side. Um, the other bit of good news is, as you know, our household waste recycling centres have reopened. Yes, there was a lot of queues on Monday. You'll have seen me on the TV saying, did you need to really bring your, your trailer of garden waste that's in a trailer? Um, but that's your decision. Good news is yesterday the queues were much more like a typical weekend. Today they're the same, so it is busy. I'd recommend you don't go first thing in the morning. If you go later on in the day, the queues are relatively short and you can get rid of your waste. But please, if you don't need to go this week, wait for another week and allow people allow everyone just to settle into a new routine the social distancing on our on our household waste recycling centers is fantastic we've moved everything around so that you move go into your space and all of the different bays you need are there for you you do not need to interact with anyone else um, the staff won't be able to help you to get your stuff out of your vehicle if it's large uh, because they need to be kept safe two meters away from you so please only take things that you can move yourself um, in um, and apart from, from Millams has had a bit of an issue on the highway, but the other two are, are, are pretty um, are pretty away from the the, the, the roads. Um, okay, um, house swaps we've talked about. Um, <sighs> right, uh, to house swaps. Okay, why can't Bournemouth and Paul Car Parts use the same app? Oh, Ian, I know my my phone is full of apps for different places. Um, we're still only a year into BCP Council. I think we have to remember that we've been in a situation where a brand new council is trying to bring together 600 services. One of those services will be a contract that we will have had with a parking company that may well be a two or three year contract. You know, we will make it as easy as we can, as quickly as we can, but actually right now it's probably not our biggest priority, so I'm really sorry. Um, Tina thinks we're just trying to make money. Let's rephrase that. Last week I told you we had a 30 million pound deficit, 30 million pounds. So if I rewind to six weeks ago when we started having these conversations, the government told us do whatever you have to do, do whatever you have to do, we'll cover the cost. So we chose to close car parks, we chose to stop charging for car parks, we created a massive hole in the finance through not charging for car parks, closing them and shutting down services. We didn't have to close those car parks. That was not part of the rules. We did it because we were told we would actually be protected financially. 
We've now got a £30 million hole in the finance, and that is putting at risk the reopening of all sorts of services that you want us to keep. You know, we're having to make incredibly difficult decisions about, you know, how much respite people get, whether the grass gets cut, how many libraries we're going to have in five years' time. Those things are big questions. And actually, yeah, let's be honest about it. About twenty-five million pound of that, 50, well, no, about fifteen million pound of that thirty million shortfall is because we've got no income. And the reason we've got no income is because over the last ten years, the way that councils get funded has moved from central government gives local government a grant to central government says to local government, find your own income. So local councils have gone to all sorts of things. They've invested in property. They've opened up facilities like crazy golf, like golf courses, like beach um, uh, kiosks, like building loads of beach huts, that building the Bournemouth lodges, which make us a lot of money. And they had to charge more for car parking. That's to fill the hole to make sure that we can actually keep our libraries open and other things. If we don't have that income, we don't have those services. So yes, financial issues are relevant. No denying it. Because the government have reneged and they have not filled that gap. And until they fill that gap, we have to balance everything. We cannot stop people coming. We could basically cause chaos on the streets by having double, double parking throughout the first two miles you know, close to the sea. But actually, we probably would be criticised for that too. Is going out on a motorboat or jet ski permitted? So water sports were also included as an area where you are allowed to proceed. However, here we go. If you are going to go in the water, you need to be aware that the lifeguards at the beach are not yet operational. The RNLI have not yet stood up their lifeguards. We are expecting them to stand up the lifeguards at about 70 places around the country. We are aware that some of our beaches will be stood back up in due course, but not yet. Because remember, this decision was made on Sunday. It's now Wednesday. Um, those lifeguards have been furloughed or they're summer staff that were never recruited. So it's going to take time. So if you're going to go in the water, whether it's your children paddling or you're going swimming, one of my friends, Kirsten from Southbourne, goes in at like six o'clock every morning. I'm a crazy woman. Um, you know, if you're going to do that, be aware there are no lifeguards, so you need to take that responsibility. Other uh, beaches don't have and never have had lifeguards. Places like Lake Pier and Hamworthy Beach have never had lifeguards, and so nothing changes. Uh, but for water sports, you are able to go out, whether it's kiteboarding, power boating, sailing, kayaking, whatever you choose to do in the water, paddleboarding. However, um, you need to be aware that the RNLI is running its lifeboat, but please don't put them at risk. You know, if you're not if you're not that proficient, please don't go out because actually it's like driving a long way. Um, you know, uh, my husband's a canoeist, a kayaker. Not sure of the right term. Probably get told off now. Um, their group has told them you can go out as long as you're comfortable with being able to capsize and get yourself turned the right way up, because you won't be able to get any help from anyone else. So just be aware. Our services are stretched. You don't want to be putting the RNLI at risk by having to come and rescue you. Dogs on beaches. So I'm sorry I've missed loads. I will promise to go back um, in the next 45 minutes. The dogs. We made a decision to allow dogs to remain on beaches up until Friday the 22nd of May. Not realising, of course, that this decision would happen this week. The decision that the management team have made is to allow the dogs to stay on the beaches, remember they must always be on a lead, until the 22nd of May, to save the confusion of going back on that decision and people getting frustrated. But after the 22nd of May, normal summer rules will apply. So for the next week, be aware, if you don't like dogs, there will be dogs on the beach, just hold on for a week. Um, and if you like taking your dog on the, uh, on the beach, you've got one more week, um, and then it will stop. We have no intention of continuing. Okay, um, okay. So um, there are lots, it's perfectly legitimate for uh, takeaways to be open. So I've had people writing to me and sending me photos. What about this place? It's open. Yeah, Starbucks is open. KFC is open. There are places that are open. People, if they're going out and they're going to be out exercising, going for a walk, 
sunbathing, reading a book, whatever, they're going to go and want a coffee or an ice cream. I don't understand the difference between why it's okay for you to go and buy your ice cream from one of those companies or from Tesco Express or from Jazzy's or whatever other cafe you choose to use, um, but not from one which is actually funding the council tax. It isn't encouraging people, the people are there. They're there and they're going to use the private company and actually we're going to make sure that people who are going to be at the beach um, can get the facilities that they need. Um, okay, um, I'm not going to talk about car parks again. I'm not going to talk. Okay, traffic wardens are out. Yes, they're issuing tickets. Yes, if you're parked illegally, you're parked illegally. I don't know what else to say. If you go in a car park that says you've got to pay £2.50 to park and you don't pay £2.50 to park, you should expect to get a ticket. I got a letter from a guy this week who hasn't paid his council tax for the last five years and asked me how much would be an acceptable amount to pay. And I said, all of it, because when I pay my council tax in full, I pay my car parking in full, there's no reason why everybody else shouldn't. So yes, if you breach the law, expect the traffic wardens to put a ticket on your car and please pay it. Um, okay, so dogs on leads, yes. Uh, do you know what? Somebody said, stay at home, it's safer. Yeah, you can stay at home. If you can stay at home, you don't need to go out, stay at home. You don't need to go to the beach, you don't need to go to the park, but if you choose to go to the park or the beach or anywhere else, you are going to be able to find that you can park safely, particularly those people with disabilities. They've been writing to me for weeks saying, I, I want to go to the beach, it's only like half a mile, but I need to drive there, but you've closed the car park. So think of those people who perhaps need to drive somewhere, people who've got children who've got additional needs where they need to drive somewhere and they can't walk long distances. You know, this isn't about helping people outside of BCP, it's about helping our own people. Okay. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo, right. Um, nowhere on a lie. Nowhere on a lie. Lifeguards are on a lie. Lifeboats are operating. I've got lots of people replying to others, so it's quite tricky. Repeat about house swaps. House swaps and... Um, Dorset Home Choice is not operational at the moment. When it is, we'll come back to you. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Gosh, there's so much on here, I can't keep up. Is Pool Park open for leisure activities? Depends what you mean by leisure activities. Pool Park is open. Um, the road is currently closed. There is a lot of work being done. You can't use the playgrounds. You can't use the outdoor gyms. They were on the list of items which the government says cannot yet be open. So if you want to go for a walk in Pool Park, you can. Um, I'm not aware that any of the things like the boat hires, they're not going to be available because you can use your own boat in the sea or the harbour, but you're not going to be able to hire a boat because there's that interaction. So, okay. Uh, I totally defend the uh, money before health. No, we have social distancing in place everywhere, but actually we can't protect your public health if we are a bankrupt. Um, okay. People forget councils are business. Yes. Uh, are people listening? Yes. Um, are we able to walk our dogs to the beach? Yes. Okay. I'm trying to think of what else I can cover. So, uh, household waste recycling tips are open. What else do I need to cover? If you are still shielding, and we know people have been told they have to shield for longer until the end of June, and you have not yet found any means of getting your shopping, Together We Can is still operating. You are very... Um, you are very, very welcome to call us uh, and get matched up with a volunteer. If you need some advice on what to do about all sorts of things, if you need your prescriptions picking up, 0300 123 7052. I've just had a message come through from uh, a very senior member of staff who's been talking to the police and it seems that the police do support what we've done around keeping the car parks open. So I haven't had the detail of that, but actually... We've worked with the police and the MPs, and they are aware that this is how we've been operating. Okay, I'm sorry I have not covered everything. There's lots I haven't actually covered because lots of people are, are responding to each other. So um, I will do my best to reply to you afterwards. Um, we will carry on with this every week. I think there is a real value to people being able to, to, to get their frustration out and to ask those questions. If you have a beat chat, you can now use it. Um, you, you know, that's something I know people have been frustrated about for a while. You know, but we are asking that when you do use your beach chart, that you please respect social distancing. You don't have gatherings um, with other with other families, um, unless, of course, they happen to be your next door neighbours and you can say two metres apart. We're also asking that the prom is used sensibly. 
Um, we know there's been issues with cyclists um, going too fast and too many of them. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful that now people can move a bit further, they, that that might change. We will, if we have to, stop cycling on the prom. We want to give it one more weekend to see if people can behave fairly and responsibly. I've also asked the police to do more patrols of a couple of spots where people have been cycling in groups and too fast. If you're a cyclist, I'm a cyclist, my kids are cyclists, please cycle. But for crying out loud, it's a promenade, 10 miles an hour, absolute max, single file, one at a time. It's frightening for people um, if you're cycling along at high speed and there have been accidents. I don't want to have to take cyclists off the prom. Equally, if you have a beach hut and the prom is only a couple of meters wide, please put your seats on the beach. The, the, there's loads of room. Um, I know you want to sit directly outside your beach hut. I get that. But actually, if that means other people can't pass safely, then you're not going to be safe and they're not going to be safe. So, you know, it's just common sense, really. And there have been questions about why we haven't only opened the even number beach huts on even days and odds on odd days. Um, we've looked at it, believe me. Uh, our numbering isn't straightforward. They don't run from one to 5,000. It's not like that. Each section of the beach has got some weird numberings and letterings. Um, and after all, we know that about 10% of people use their beach huts every day. So if only 10% of you are using it, then actually we shouldn't be able to have too much of a problem. So, you know, let's not overcomplicate it. If you get to the beach and it's too busy, leave. There's lots of other bits of beach you could go to. There's lots of parks you could go to and you could drive somewhere if you choose to or cycle or walk somewhere else. You could stay in your own community and use your local green space for a bit longer. Just use some common sense. We are all adults and if we all just keep two meters away from everybody else we can use kiosks we can use public toilets if we carry a packet of wipes with us we can use the car parks and yes if you use the car parks that is going to help the council's financial situation but you could cycle or walk to the beach if that's your preference if you need to use the bus please use the bus but be mindful of the fact the social distance on the bus if you feel the need to wear a face mask do that um so just you know, think about it. We've gone slightly over time, but I just want to make you aware because lots of people have been telling us. We have seen details of some protests that are happening this weekend, um, apparently happening all over the country, a couple of them happening in BCP area. We are aware of them. Um, you know, it appears to be people who are objecting to the lockdown. Um, it's a sort of slightly counterintuitive, but we are aware, we're working with the police, we're going to make sure everything goes off safely. But if you do see people behaving in a way that you don't think is appropriate, probably the easiest thing to do, walk the other way, because getting into some sort of confrontation with people you don't agree with um, is probably not going to make it safer for any of us. Um, I regret that the government and Boris Johnson has made this decision right now to let people travel anywhere. I'm hoping that common sense will prevail and they'll say, travel within 30 miles of home. I think it's unlikely though, based upon other evidence. If that happens, we're complying with the rules as best we can. We've made a judgment. We don't get everything right. But I think that our staff will manage this well. I think the people of, of, of Bournemouth, Christchurch and Paul are really sensible people. And if we all act responsibly, we have nothing to fear. And if other people come to our area and help to support our economy and they behave properly, great. And if they don't, then we'll do our best to manage those people's behavior. So on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Um, please, I will spend the next hour, half an hour or so replying to as many as I can. My colleagues at BCP Council will also reply where they can if I don't have the answer or they beat me to it. Um, and I'll be back again next week for another um, live um, a live uh, broadcast. Just to say the following week, we're going to have to move things a little bit later because we have cabinet and that's unlikely to be finished by 12, but we will notify people in advance. Thanks very much, everybody. Bye-bye.